I'm already inspired and I want to sit, I want to play and I want to write songs and I want to compose music. Hello, Chris at ePianos here. There are loads of videos on the Yamaha CP88 out there. In this video, I just want to talk about and show you what I love about this piano, which means there's not going to be very much talking, it's just going to be me playing it and talking you through what I like about it. So here we go. Now you might be able to hear there's someone mowing their lawn outside, which is to be expected, I suppose, when I'm trying to make videos in my shed. But uh, luckily I've got a DI out, so you should be able to hear everything just fine. There's a huge selection of pianos in here. That's the default one when you turn it on, Yamaha Concert Grand Piano. Uh, pleased to say that the other great world-class Concert Grand Piano, the um, Imperial Grand from Bosendorfer is in here also. That's the second piano, much mellower. What I love about this piano is you can get lost in the piano selection alone. Um, you can get carried away, it can transport you, um, particularly when you're wearing headphones. highly recommend you wear headphones. Indeed there are no speakers built in to this model, so headphones are the way to go and you can get lost. So I've only scratched the surface so far just playing that, uh, those two pianos and already uh, the Imperial Grand makes you want to play, makes me want to play, but there's some more in there. This is just the grand piano section up here alone. I haven't touched anything else yet where we can layer sounds. Uh, I'm just going to keep going through them and see where it takes me. This is the S700 Grand Piano.
brighter, a little bit toothier that one, isn't it? You can get stuck into that. I love the range, the fact that you can go from mellow down to just flicking the keys a little bit and getting a bit of... I turn my laptop off so we can't hear emails coming in. Uh, number four on here. Of course, there's a good selection of digi pianos. Here's another grand piano, C7. So this is another Yamaha grand piano, which of course they've sampled to the nth degree. And already leaning on that piano there, I find that from the first touch, there's so much range, so much dynamic range. Um, so I can play light as a feather, or I can play heavy and it responds and it makes you want to play. It makes me want to play with light and shade and variation. That's what you want from a piano. CF3. So a little richer, a little bit deeper. But there's a little bit more bite on the top end there. lends itself to that sort of blues playing. C3. Ah, he already hear the woody tone from that one. And that just inspires you in a million different ways. It makes you want to write a ballad.
That's why I'm so enjoying this piano because even scratching the surface going through the pianos in the grand piano section I'm already inspired and I want to sit, I want to play and I want to write songs and I want to compose music because the, it's giving me the palette, the shades in my palette so I can paint something, so I can create my own soundscape. It's, that's just the piano. This really opens up possibilities. I haven't even touched the effects I can add to this yet. I've got a little bit of reverb on there, but that's to stop it sounding so dry. If I just switch the reverb off, it really is dry. But a little bit of reverb on there just to give it some echo. Um, so there's a live C3, which is sounds like the normal C3 with a bit of echo. Uh, now, the other section on here that's really been exciting me is the uh, upright piano. So important because these types of pianos are so often filled with just grand pianos, and grand pianos, they're not, for most people, I think the sound that they're used to. They're used to playing upright pianos because, you know, grand pianos, you have to have a lot of space in your house, and a lot of people, not a lot of people have that growing up like I did. I had an old piano that I think my parents recovered from a skip when I was growing up, and it sounded a bit more like this. That's not to criticise Yamaha upright pianos, which are fabulous, of course. Sound. It really does take me back. There's, I think there's more character in upright pianos. And I love that sentimental style. what I was thinking of. Another upright in there too, which again, very different tone. There's two upright pianos in there, um, but that first one, the Yamaha U1, I, I can sit and play all day, uh, inspiring. It is. Um, so I, I haven't touched anything else yet, but this piano is all about how you can blend your own sounds. 
Now, I, I better stick to piano because I could really be, I could play this all day and do a 24 hour long video, I think. But if I just stick to piano in this video and then I'll go into some of the extra sections. But one of the ways I can customize the piano is by um, adding things like drive and chorus to it. So I'm going to stick to that U1. And adding a little bit of chorus definitely gives it that uh, more of an 80s feel. <laughs> if, I don't know, I think it might be the um, the effect of the VHS tape pull that this is uh, this is reminding me of. I always think about uh, old 80s films that we were watching as kids growing up, like the Goonies and things like that. They were recorded on a bad VHS and played a billion times and eventually the tape would pull it so much that the sound would go distorted. That's what this reminds me of. Um, and you can tweak the depth on there if you need to and make it really over the top chorusy. Um, as a compressor, a distortion is an interesting one because um, this piano, as I said, really is about blending your own sound and being unique in what you create. Rather than having a bunch of presets, you can really make your own sounds and then save them. just a little bit of distortion I've got something that again is is inspiring me and making me want to write a song or compose something um, and that's just a, a little bit of distortion which if I wanted to I could really I'm not going to turn it up too much because that's overdoing it a bit but I can um, be as silly as I want with it and really create something uh, unique drive pianos in particular is delay of which we've got a specific section here dedicated to delay analog and digital which I'm not going to attempt to explain the difference because uh, I don't know and I don't know anyone that does know but maybe someone could comment and tell us what the difference between analog and digital delay is regardless when I fiddle around with it this is what happens okay so I've got pretty neutral settings there uh, on the analog delay and this suddenly has turned it into John Lennon's piano. I'll tweak it down a bit. And that's just a simple bit of delay. Turn it up a wee bit instead of a fiddle. So again, just a, a simple tweak there and I'm off on a totally new tangent of wanting to create something. Um, and that sound I can now save in there uh, if I want to uh, for use in, a, in whatever else I choose to do next. Now let's just try analog delay just for the heck of it and see what happens. So that seems to sustain it for longer but I'll turn it up. Interesting. Bring the timing down a bit. So 
there's an interesting way to play that if you begin to play in time with the time delay, you can do something quite interesting. Or something completely awful, of course. Um, so, in the piano section, we then go to CP pianos. <laughs> which, of course, there's a selection of two on there that are absolutely classic. And then there is also a layered section which gives you basically piano and strings and piano and synth strings, which then opens up the possibility of having uh, an even uh, more complex blend when you add the other voices in there too. So, I could go on, and I'm gonna make more videos on this because I could really do a 24 hour stint on this, but I just wanted to cover pianos for this one and what it is that inspires me about it. Um, and hopefully I've done that and I've shared that with you because when you're a musician, when you're a creator, you want to be inspired by your instrument. And my God, does CP88 do that, particularly with headphones, because you can just be transported to a different world while you're playing. And that's just uh, what I love. So I'm going to play a bit more of that Bosendorfer.